All right, guys, we have a double watch video. So I don't have a video on either one of these. And I guess rather than make individual videos on them, let's do both of them. And we can do some comparisons because it's from the same brand and it's basically the same watch. You're just going to get a little bit more with one versus the other. However, it is more difficult to get the one with more. So first off, big thanks to Stuart who lent in the Mako, what is this one? The Mako 2 USA or Mako USA 2, I guess, this is the white one. And then the black dial one here was sent in by Mark, which is also a Mako 2, but it's not on USA. And we'll get into what that covers. It's more than just, you know, its origin. It's not where it's from. It's a design. It's part of the name of the watch. So both of them have the same case and for the most part, the same measurements. They're both 41 mil, 41 and a half millimeter, excuse me, watches. The lug to lug on both of them is going to be 46.85, but you can see on the white dial one or the USA model, it has drilled lug holes. So if that's your thing, then try to find these models. Now the thickness is a little bit different. As you can see, part of the difference here is on the black dial one, you have a, a mineral crystal, probably similar to what Seiko uses for hard lex, but it's not the same as from what I understand. But you can see it sits slightly proud of the bezel, whereas on the white dial one, it's actually below the bezel. So this guy here, the black one, is 13.2 millimeter thick. This one here is 12.82 millimeter thick. They both share 22 millimeter lug widths. The bracelets both taper down to 20 millimeter, but the bracelets are a little bit different. Mostly the USA model has solid end links, as you can see there with articulating center pieces. And these are hollow end links on this one. They both use split pin design. They both have the same clasp system here, simple stamped fold over with three micro adjust. So screw down crown on both 200 meter water resist. The movement, everyone calls it the F69. There's more numbers after it, but it's the F69 automatic movement. You can, you can hack it, you can hand wind it. And unlike the previous or the older ones, if maybe you don't know this, but there was earlier models of this basic watch and there was another crown uh, here. There was another crown here and that's how you adjusted the day I think. Now it's all integrated with the F69 movement that you do the day date function much like you would on like an SKX or most Seiko movements you would do it all right from the crown. The crown on both these is 5.9 millimeter crown size so they're just under six millimeter and that is pretty much my only complaint with the watch is it needs a larger crown which I know is going to be a case redesign because you're not going to be able to just stuff a larger crown in there. You don't have the clearance with the crown guards. But if Orient were to take their time and retool and do all that, I think you'd have a pretty heavy hitter on the, on the affordable range. Because if you go over to Long Island Watch, I'll put a link to both of these from Long Island Watch. I don't have any affiliation with uh, Long Island or Mark or anything like that. It's just a source that I use, much like you guys use. So, but if you go over there right now, this guy here is 169. That is a killer deal. It's under 200 bucks. I mean, what more do you want? Yes, it doesn't have the sapphire crystal, but it's under $200, guys. It's a crazy good deal. And I love the the 12, 6, and 9 Arabics with that really nicely done sword hand and the tip of uh, a, a spot of red on the tip of the seconds hand. So, now on this guy here, I know I keep bringing you guys watches that basically you can't find. You have to count on the secondary market. I'm not sure how many they made of these. I think they were basically limited because they're gone. So whether you go to any authorized dealer of the Orient, this guy is gone. I will put a link to Long Island Watch. Back when he did have them, he was selling them for $315. And I think you could have gotten them even less than that. There might have been some discount codes from some other people. I suspect you could have gotten these for around the 260 mark back when they first came out, but uh, they're just long gone. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? Um, guys, mod these. You can do different bezels. You can obviously put a sapphire crystal in them. You can do different bez bezel inserts. That's another big difference here between these two is the font on the bezel inserts. 
I personally prefer basically everything about the one on the left, the white dialed one. I like the handset more. I like the white dial with the off-white um, cream, you know, loom plots on the hands and the indices. I like the larger font on the bezel insert, uh, the solid end links, the sapphire crystal. I think, you know, for basically, I mean, roughly, it's less than double your money. I think you're getting a lot more. And the exclusivity to a basically limited edition watch. So I think that's where I would go. Um, I don't own either of these. Like I said, these were loaned into the channel. So, But let's pop them on the wrist. Let's take a look at that real quick, and then we'll do a loom shot. And in case you're wondering, I'm wearing the Omega still for the entire month of October. Now this one here, I got to move the tag out of the way because, well, I won't snap it up because it's brand new. Stuart never wore it, so... But you can see on my wrist, there's a reason why guys like these watches and buy them. There's a bunch of different colors. There's hard to find ones, and it's just a great overall watch. All right, let me put this one on wrist. You can see that guy on wrist. And let's do the loom shot. Yeah, the loom looks. The loom is brighter on the USA model, but they're both great guys. They're both killer overall models. Thanks for watching.